All right, <clears throat> so last time I posted an oil change video on my wife's 2018 Ford Edge, somebody said I didn't go into enough depth or detail about what size sockets I use, what size, uh, you know, what type of oil, everything like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'll go over it again today. She's due again, and uh, I just went and picked it up. Usually I like Mobile One Oil. No real reason, I just always preferred it. When I used to machine engines, I just saw that you know, the engines that ran a consistent mobile one looked a little better to me. To me, um, it might have been the guys were more consistent on their oil changes, doesn't really matter. So what I did is I picked up some 5W30 synthetic blend motor oil, Motorcraft brand. Uh, you have a five quart and you have, a, you have to buy a sixth because this engine uses six quarts. I also bought an FL910S for Motorcraft filter. So that's what I used on this one. Um, I got it racked up. I always check to make sure it's stable and not going to fall on me or anything like that. You know, this, this one has points where they tell you to jack it and pick it up. So I always like to set it down on the locks. That's just a personal thing. Then I like to go over and make sure I grabbed it where I thought I grabbed it. Uh, everything looks good. Make sure I still have clearance to the top, even though the bar should shut it off. I always just get anxious. Uh, everything looks good. So, you know, there's a lift point here and lift point there, and they literally have two arrows that point to it. So I always like to look under them while I'm underneath, give them a good look over make sure everything is the way it should be. Um, especially doing oil changes. I don't like to keep, I, I don't like to get all that used oil on my hands. There's a lot of bad, nasty stuff in it. So I always wear gloves on an oil change. Looks like this is taking some hitting or is just getting loose. Yep. See, that's what I don't like about these little fasteners. They break off or are missing completely. And not to say, you know, there hasn't been some damage that happened there, but they should use, I'd use a quarter turn, honestly, on something like that. No big deal, but not our problem either. So today, you know, we're just gonna do the oil change real quick and get moving on. Forward, they're probably going to be oddball seven or eight millimeter, and they are seven. So you need a seven millimeter to take down this cover. And be gentle with them because they are very skinny and they might snap. Ford must use a non-coated fastener because that that one looks like crap. Uh, the lovely sounds of Western Pennsylvania and what happens to the bottom of your vehicles. But they did come out. It couldn't hurt to throw some anti-seize on them. I think I did, but I'm gonna do it again. Um, I just, I would rather deal with the NICs than broken fasteners. Just my own reasoning. Anytime I have to drill out a bolt or a screw or something like that, and a little bit of NICs would have fixed it, that's what I do. So, NICs is your friend. Now, I don't know that it's necessary to take this cover off. 
I do take it off though. Same thing, like that's supposed to push up in there and hold it. It's not. That's got a screw right there. I know the guy that put that in there. And here we go with this. The screw's almost stripped. But we got it, so that's all that really matters. Get it out, done. This one shouldn't be like this. We'll pick that out later. One more screw. What are the chances of getting lucky twice? I think these were supposed to be stainless, but they must have been cheap stainless, so such is life. All right, so after you do all that, you flop it down, push this guy out because it's obviously doing a lot right now, or take a pick to it, whatever you prefer. There, that way we can put it back together. So this is all I do. I flop it out of the way. Right there's your oil filter. See right there? Just because I know the lighting isn't that good underneath. So on the front of the engine is your oil filter. Not real hard to get. Also, looks like that PTU is leaking a little bit. Uh, here's her drain right there. I might just take this whole thing off. There's a little, little, two little screws, and I want to say they're, they're not four. Are they five? They're not five. I know that they're not seven, so they got to be six, not six. Ford had a habit of using an oddball 5.5 millimeter. And that's what it is. Five point, these two little screws are 5.5 millimeter. Makes no sense at all why to do something like that, but that's Ford, that's what they do. Um, if we can use a different size screw or fastener, we're going to because Ford. I think my neighbors must watch Puddin's Fab Shop because they're over there pressure washing everything. All right. So we got that one off. We got that one off. 5.5 millimeter. Take your drain can. It underneath grab your filter crack it loose and what I do is I let them drain because there's always some that comes out like that and while it's draining 
grab your new filter. And I like to pre-fill them. If they're vertical like that, I like to pre-fill them. It's just less time that engine has to go without oil. It's just an old habit. It's not, not necessary, but it makes me feel better about it. So even a little bit is just one second less that engine has to. Take some of your oil, smear it on your rubber gasket. Now that your old filter has stopped draining, which this was a, a Mobile One M1-102A. Grab your new one. And you can let all this oil drain out. You know, you wanna get all the old oil out of it. So that's still draining. Let's figure out what, a, what we need for the other side. I want to say it was a 14 millimeter off the top of my head, but I'm not 100% sure because, nope. Maybe 15, 15 it is. So I like to just crack these loose. That way you got it finger tight. This thing's still draining. Well, that's draining. Let's go give the car a little look over. I like to watch my tires, look for them to be even wear. Nothing, you know, too extreme on either edge. I like to look at the ball joints, look at the tie rod ends, look at the brake lines, I look at the sway bar end links. Underneath, these have that stretch to fit belt. I like to look at the belt, make sure it's good. Make sure it isn't losing any ribs or dry rotted or cracked. Same thing on this side. Look at the brakes. Because mama, she can be hard on brakes. Look at the exhaust and the CV joints for the uh, drive shaft. Make sure that you got no major leaks. You know, you always get a little wetness. Look at your bushings and links and everything like that. So all this looks good. This thing does have electronic parking brakes on it. Um, nothing major there, nothing loose, nothing crazy. All looks good. All right, so now that that's done and we've looked around and made sure it's good, now what I do is grab your filter. Let me get a light so everybody can see. There we go. Grab your filter, screw it on. Once the gasket touches, somebody says half turn, somebody says full turn, whatever. Whatever you like to do, as long as you oil it, It'll come back off. And since this is up here, I always wipe it off. Grab you some brake clean or whatever you got. Uh, yeah, I got engine parts in front of mine, but I always keep a can over here. It's not brake clean, it's ether, but that'll work. ether, brake clean, it'll work for what we're doing. All right, so that's all cleaned up, that's all done. Now we can drain the oil from the pan. So get it up. Get it where you think it's gonna go.
There we go. Let that drain out. Also, it's good to change your oil if it's warm. You know, uh, any oil change is better than no oil change, but changing it while it's warm helps wash out some of the crap in the pan that builds up over the days or years or miles or whatever. And this is the one I also put a trailer hitch on and we've used it a couple times. It does work well. I just like to look and make sure nothing's falling apart or coming loose or bent or anything. It's always good to retorque your bolts every once in a while. So while that's draining, and since I'm in an anti-seize mood, we're gonna get some anti-seize and put it on these fasteners because rust PA. And then, you know, the next time you take them off, hopefully it makes it easier. No guarantees, but hopefully. I really don't know why they didn't use something different than this. These are ridiculous. Ford kills me sometimes. I love them, but man. You'd think they'd come up with a little better idea for a fastener or, or screw or something like that. Let me see if I got something better. some self-tapping screws. Wonder bolts. You know, somebody should have their kids organize all these screws for them. We'll put that on the someday list. That's fittings. Gotta be something in here. You know what? I'd rather have something with a head on it. But these will work. And then next time I'll be cussing myself out because I didn't find a bolt. So that's my fault, but whatever. Let's find some washers. Found any washer. Let's find another one. What do they say? 99 out of 100 times, you'll go to the wrong bin. Or, you know, the wrong drawer. All right, good enough. These will work. I'm pretty sure they're stainless, so we'll still in, I seize them. But they're gonna work for now, for today. And a lot of people take these covers off. The only reason I, I feel like you should keep it is it ha does have ducting in it to cool off the power transfer unit. So in my opinion, you should probably keep it. Um, up to you. I like to let the oil drain really well, clean it out. I mean, you're, you're not gonna get all of it out ever, but the more you can get out, the better. And like I said, it's really nothing important. So again, 15 millimeter for your drain plug, seven millimeter for 90% of the screws under it, 
5.5 for the two back ones. And a lot of people just flop that down, and I usually do too, but it makes it a little easier to see if I took it all down. So, uh, that thing's still draining a little bit. On another note, uh, I put Iron Man SUV tires on this thing. Awesome tires for the money. Not that they're gonna get any cheaper, but right as of now, they were one of the cheapest options. So awesome tire, uh, seems to get good mileage. Can't complain about it. All right. So put your drain plug back in. And guys, you don't have to go caveman on this thing. Just snug it up. Click, all right, torqued. Wipe everything off. It's about time to drain the, the drain pan. All right, so that's good, that's good. Let's put our cover back on. Guys, we're back here. And put them in the wrong spot because that's what we do the first time. And we do it nice because we do it twice. It's always when you're getting in a hurry. that everything messes up or you mess up or something doesn't go right. There we go. There we go. So there's our 5.5s in. Definitely, definitely don't go crazy on these. No need to put the gorilla to them. They, they are tiny little guys. I mean, two finger tight is more than enough. All right, 5.5's in. Grab our seven, a couple extra screws. Usually I use a drill to do these, but not today. Back on this one. Click. 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 That one's broken. That one goes up there. Click. 
quick. Click. Replacement screws. Uh, maybe not. It must be a, just a hair too big. You could probably railroad them in there, but I'm gonna go with don't. Go back to our bolt bin, look for our screws. Uh, this guy will probably work. And where's his brother at? And this guy. Oh no. Steal your indices back off this one. Washer. Brush around a little bit. Realize that one's just as tight as the last one. All right, so we're getting nowhere with this. And my hands are sweating because of gloves, so we may not have anything. Not all the time do you got this right screw. There's one that I know will work. Hmm. Might not have nothing. Let me look a little deeper. There's something in there. They say, every man has a bolt bin. And they say, if you find something in it, you'll need two of them. And you only have one. Well, today we got both. Good enough. So once again, back to our anti-seize. Make sure it fits the screw head. It does, good enough. Look at that. Looks like it was meant to be there. Countersunk and everything. Boom. Done. Notice you forgot a washer that fell off one of the bolts. So go back, readdress that. Knowing right where it came from, the tiny five millimeter, five and a half millimeter that you didn't want to mess with anyway. Fix that. Because OCD is a terrible thing. bigger
There we go, done. Took way too many minutes to do that that it shouldn't have, but it is what it is. So OCD is a terrible thing again. Put everything back so you know you have all your sockets. Wipe your hands on your pants so you don't get grease in mom's car and have her yell at you. All right, lift your lift up. Release your locks. Coming down. Man, they are still going at it with the pressure washer. But they do run circle track cars, so. You know, they don't leave mud at the track. It all comes home with them. All right, so you gotta release the secondary catch under here. There you go. While I'm always filling these, I like to look underneath and say, you know, make sure it's got brake fluid, make sure it's got coolant in it because these things have a issue where they, uh, some of them burn coolant due to casting problems in the head or something. Ford says it's not a gasket, but sure seems like a head gasket issue to me. I don't know, I haven't had one apart. Drop your cap. tamper proof caps and double seals on oil, but that's okay. Turn it so you don't get the glug. See how close we can get it to the top without overflowing. Got a bigger funnel. Alright. And what I do is I put in five, let it drain down a minute, and then I check. The other thing I like to do is, in the back of the owner's manual, I like to write the date, the mileage, uh, what, what filter and oil I put in it. And that's just a, a personal preference. You don't obviously have to do any of that, but it's just my personal preference. Looks like this thing, I can't see the miles from here. There we go. So, so, 
37, 31, 22. Motorcraft. Semi. Sin. 5W30. And what was the part number on the filter? That was uh, FL910S. Mark the miles. If we can get it to click up, find the key. Uh, okay, 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 okay. So now you got to go into your menu. Settings, vehicle, oil life reset, hold okay to reset, boom, done, back out, back out, back out, go, I don't know which display mode she had, probably not that one, probably that one, knowing my wife, shut it off. Now we can go check our oil. Slowest oil change ever. Done. Remember, the filter isn't all the way full. Yep, so about three quarters of a quart down. We'll add our last three quarters of a quart, and away we go. Don't forget to put your cap back on. Uh, I always like to wipe up any mess I make. There we go. And then I like to start them. Make sure you have no leaks. Check your hood, because it didn't even sound like it shut all the way. Nope, it was shut. But I always like to double make sure. There we go. All right guys, thanks for watching. I hope this is better for the other people that really wanted to have an in-depth how-to on how to change your oil under Ford Edge. Hope this helps somebody out. See you guys next time.